There was a question in the comments today, a chap who's got an LR2, must be the only one, uh, he's got a problem with the battery going flat. After four days the battery goes flat. Now, he did the most usual things, replace the alternator and replace the battery. Well, sometimes you don't need to do that. You need to have to have a methodical testing method to find out actually what's going wrong because it might not be the battery, as he's found out, and it might not be the alternator, as he's found out. So what I suggested him to get was one of these little kittens here. This is a fantastic little tool for the DIY man or whatever for doing cars, houses, anything really. Because it's a clamp meter, that means you put a wire through here and you can test its current. So this acts as just as though it's like my old fashioned multimeter, but look at the difference in size. This is nice, I like this one because it's got a bigger scale and if I'm looking from a distance uh, I can put the backlight on. In fact, I think this has got a backlight on as well. But um, I'll just use this for as a ringer and to do volts, all right, to check if there's any volts. But sometimes you can get strange things happening with circuits where you'll get volts, but no amps. Could be bad contact somewhere. So you're at the back of the car messing about with a lamp bulb thinking, ah, oh, I've got some volts, I've got some volts. You ain't got no flow. So it's a strange phenomenon. I've seen it happen a few times. Um, could be a bad fuse, bad connection, who knows. So you're wondering why I've got this little fan on here, because this is going to be a demonstration to show you how we use this and how we set it up. I want to get it the right way around. Um, it, the instructions in it are pretty vague, so I thought I'd give you a rundown, because if you do buy one, you'll be stuck. It, it's, got an off, it's got a little thumb wheel here where we can change the settings. The settings are very straightforward. We've got off, naturally, We've got volts, we've got ohms, and then we go on to amps, and this is the section that we're doing. The, the, the volts and the ohms are used with the assistance of cables that are provided with this little piece of cable. And again, it's not, I'll tell you something, this is about $45, 25 quid or something like that, it's very cheap. So what we're interested in is amps, in this case. In this case, it could be a flat battery. All right, um, so I've set up a fan. Now this fan was on my uh, switching power supply on my computer that f went breasts up during the holidays so I had to desperately go around trying to find a switching power supply. Uh, the fan works so I thought I'll keep it as a demonstration. Why? Why not a bulb mic? Well, this is rated at 1 point, uh, 0.16 of an amp. It's not much. But with this we can verify to see how much current it's pulling. Alright, so... I've rigged it up so I've got the negative onto this terminal here, positive onto there. I've got a fuse in the circuit so we won't, uh, won't have any problems. But when you first turn this on, and we're, because it's 0.16 of an amp, we're going to set it to 2. Because it goes in increments of 2, 20 and 100. And it goes to NCV. I don't know what that means. I'm not an electrician. I don't know. Somebody will write in and tell me. So we set it on 2. And you can see, oh, wait a minute, I'll put the backlight on. Will it work? There. Hey, look at that. So I've got, got the backlight on. And you can see it says AC. That's not AC, DC. Uh, but that's not the range we want. And this is the most important thing about this little blue button. Because it corresponds to the little blue marks you can see here. All right? Because most of it's in, the white bits are in uh, AC, but the blue bits are in DC. So we press this button here, and it switches the light off. It switches all the bloody current back on and off. So now you can see we've got DC. All right? But notice the figures are not quite correct. We have to set it to zero. So now we're going to put this on here. Clamp this. Notice I've lost my light again. There. Now this battery is getting a little bit low now, but we've got 0 0.092 of an amp. So we're uh, we should be one point. What did I say? One point six. So we can. Oh, lamps switched off automatically. That's why. 
So we can see current going through this. Now if you were to clamp um, if you were to clamp a battery, uh, you know the main battery wire coming from your alternator, don't set it at two. Set it at a hundred and then work down until you see a reasonable range. Is that clear? Because it's, it's, you know, if you were here with me, I could tell you how to do it, but <laughs> trying to talk to a, com to a camera screw is kind of awkward. But I hope you like that. Um, in, like I say, a great little tool to have. Not a fluke, but it's good. Um, but what could be the cause of a battery going flat? I've seen them for years and years, all sorts of really odd problems. Um, radios and uh, entertainment systems are notorious for pulling amps off. Uh, in fact, when we've been putting fancy stereos and stuff like this in, in cars, like in Defenders, we've found out that batteries don't last a week or two without needing to charge up because the bloody radios, the clocks and all the ECUs inside them are pulling power. While, there's, while it's not doing anything, while it's on idle. Same goes for clocks. Clocks can pull a little bit of power, just a few milliamps, not much, but it can, it can be something. But the easiest way to test it, once you've, once you've clamped your battery, thus, and you've got your key out of your ignition, and you're still seeing a reading here, simply go to your fuse box, and pull one fuse out at a time. Don't pull them all out, you never know which way they go back in again. Just pull one fuse out at a time, check. Another fuse, put it back in, check. And when you see that reading go to almost zero, you know you're on the right track. Then you can go to your workshop manual, look up the wiring diagram, and see what that fuse actually does. It's sometimes written on the inside of the cover, but knowing Land Rovers and things like this, it doesn't always necessarily mean it's the right cover. So I hope you like that. Interesting experiment, wasn't it? Uh, just before you go, a little bit of interest. Uh, I've set this multimeter. Uh, I've set this meter up again to. I put it to zero. But what happens when you put a load on the fan, as in simulating it's getting seized up or something like that, like a heater blower? So we put the clamp on. Now this time I've, I've been doing this about three or four times. I couldn't get it to work, and I realised that the light button is also the hold button. So I'm going to try and zoom in so you can get this in a good view. So if you can see this, shout out. Can't see. All right. Mm. right. So I'm going to hold this in the middle and watch the amps rapidly go up. See, there's more current being drawn through that to try and turn to try and turn the uh, to try and turn the fan, the current's flowing quicker. If you see what I mean, so there's it's, there's more of a load on it. So the, the 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 old atoms and things like the electrons or whatever they call, they're flying around that way, saying, "Come on, we've got to get this fan going." This hasn't got a fuse in it, by the way. The other the other piece had a fuse in this one here, but it was a 30 amp fuse, so it's not really wise to do that. But I was just in a little, little experiment to show you. If you have a seized fan on your uh, blower, for example, you'll see the rating go up higher than the actual fan is designated for because if you look in the workshop manual at the, the uh, wiring diagram, it usually says on fans and motors and things like this what the actual amperage is of that particular item. All right, so that's a good starting point. Interesting, eh? Right, glad you liked that. We'll see you later.